This week on The Vic Meyer Show, I'm going to sit down with best-selling author Steve Searles, also known as The Bear Whisperer, to set aside all the rumors concerning the demise of Victor the Bear. 300 million people that are involved with this story now around the world don't know that truth. It's been reported around the world that it was an attack. Same thing, that's a lie. They fed the bear for over an hour the night before. That's very frustrating to me. You don't need to climb a tree. You don't need to play dead. You don't need to piss your pants. But that night with Victor. This story is for Victor the bear, because you should know, it wasn't just the incidents you saw, and we're not gonna give any time to that video that went so viral of Victor's so-called attack when all it was is an incident known as cuffing. But if you don't know anything about bears and you don't educate yourself, none of these things will be apparent. So it is my job and it is my task to bring to you the true story of what happened to Victor Bear, Victor Pahabichi, if you will, as the natives say, our, our beloved Victor the Bear and what really led to his ultimate demise. Um, people have this real connection with bears and I think that is part of what has um, made me, you know, indeed worldwide uh, name with bear management. My name is Steve Searles and I was the wildlife officer for the town of Mammoth Lakes. Steve, thank you very much for spending time with me, sitting down and helping me set the record straight here when it comes to Victor the Bear. It's been two months um, since Victor was killed, and every day I see um, people believing misinformation about what happened. And so I'll be glad to answer your questions, but um, it's just glaring. It, 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 I think it's the biggest part of the whole story and Victor losing his life is how people conducted themselves the next morning. Victor was a very unique bear and uh, with all of my decades of experience with bears, um, I can clearly say that, that he was very, very unique. And so it was easy to spend time with them and try to help him out and teach him uh, what he was allowed to do and what he wasn't. Did any of the campers come to you and talk to you about what was happening around the incident with Victor the Bear? They all individually, one at a time, came to my house and said where they were standing, what they heard, what campsite they were in, what time of day it is. I asked every one of them, why are you telling me this? Why, have, why are you at my house? And they all said the same thing because law enforcement didn't interview them. The actual of destroying Victor is one issue. Um, uh, I separate it from what happened next, all the misinformation, uh, the lies that were being told um, a lot by media a lot by uh, the Fish and Game Forest Service. Um, it's very, very sad uh, that we, bad things happen. Every person that's watching this has had bad things happen in their lives. Um, that's guaranteed. It's what we do next that makes all the different countless bears that I've interacted with in my career all over North America. Uh, Victor was very, very unique. What made Victor the Bear unique. That's what got him killed. He had the uh, demeanor of a golden retriever. <laughs> and so all the finger pointing, dodging responsibility um, is, I think, really put gasoline on the fire compared to if we just told the people the truth. And I don't think the people know the truth even till today. I readily admit that Victor was habituated to living at Lake Mary, Lake George, um, uh, Lake Mamie, and the people were conditioned to his presence as well. Come on, come on. Get out. Get going. He's gotten so big. He is big. We've known him since he was like a tween. 
He's a, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. What do you think led to this incident? And are you suspicious that it was more than just that incident that brought Victor the Bear into the camp? The people that were involved in videotaping um, right there at those two campsites, they fed the bear for over an hour the night before. That wasn't ever asked. That was never logged or reported or put on the case file of, of what happened. They had fed that bear. Um, the same lady that they call Stump Lady had been involved feeding the bear the night before. Where, where were they feeding the bear? In uh, Campsite 10. So campers came to you from the campsite feeling compelled to have the whole story be told. Not just campers, but campground hosts. I did reach out to the Mammoth Lakes Police Department, and they told me that there were no incident reports filed, that the Mammoth Police were not on scene, and they really had nothing to do with the incident. MLPD wasn't there. That's the only law enforcement we have in the Lake Basin. Those are the only officers that were on scene that knew Victor the Bear. Is that not municipal land? that the campground sits on? It's the incorporated area of the city of Mammoth Lakes. Has been forever. And so that's why we handle the policing, the wildlife calls, um, fist fights, drunks, whatever happens in the lake space. And it's not the fishing game of the Forest Service. Um, they haven't been an element of it for decades. But, but that night, with Victor in Coldwater Campground, um, it was two uh, Forest Service Leos and two Fish and Game dudes. That was by design. Uh, when this happened, uh, the night that the video was shot, um, like a lot of other nights, uh, the uh, Victor started at campsite one and was looking for burnt marshmallows or s'mores or whatever he can find on the ground. As he went uh, into campsite one, um, different campers responded in different ways. One had a whistle that he was blowing at Victor to get him out of his out of the campsite. And you recommend that sort of action? I don't use whistles, but people do different things. I'm not here to criticize them. A couple of campsites down, they had a dog that moved Victor on. A couple of campsites down, the whole group uh, lit out after Victor with pots and pans and verbal commands to the bear to move him along. When they got all the way down to campsite nine, there wasn't anybody that was staying on the whole lake that didn't know that the bear was in the campground. Everybody could hear it for hundreds and hundreds of yards, you knew there was an encounter with the bear and the people were moving them off. For the people to say that they weren't aware that the bear was there and it caught them by surprise and she froze out of fear and stood on a stump, it's very sad that, that, that the truth wasn't told. I understand that. Um, that we as a society, the 300 million people that are involved with this story now around the world don't know that truth. That's very frustrating to me. It puts the bear in a bad light and it, it's just not the truth. It hurts me deeply. Um, in the short time I haven't been uh, working uh, in badge and uniform, um, so other factors have happened with our community, tourism, the drive for profit. Uh, as all of this collided at the same time, it cost Victor his life and other bears as well. And so, yeah, it weighs on me heavily. Do me a favor, if you haven't already done so, and subscribe to The Vic Meyer Show, hit the notifications bell, and stay up to date on everything involving The Vic Meyer Show. Much love. I'm nobody. And I'm the luckiest person you'll ever interview in your life. I was never qualified for this job. Um, I'm not smart. I don't 
own a computer. I'm not uh, articulate or have a big vocabulary. I'm not good looking. And life came by and tapped me on the shoulder. And I was smart enough to um, go down that road. And it's been just an incredible blessing that I've tried to give away and share with other communities that have modeled their programs after what we were doing in Mammoth. So <clears throat> my, you say I'm humble or I have humility. There's no way I can't have. Um, all of this has been uh, a, a blessing, whatever you might believe in, a higher power, the creator, mother nature, the good earth. Um, uh, they picked me for this ride and uh, it's been an amazing thing. So to see it go the way it's gone and what has happened, uh, yeah, it hurts me deeply. If you watch the video, um, hundreds of millions of people have, and lots of them have reached out to me to share their two cents of what they thought was, you know, the bear was thinking. Uh, I'm, I don't know that I can definitively say, but I can say I have a very high threshold for being with bears at a close distance, male bears, female bears, cubs. Um, yeah, I, I can read their body language and I can be very, very close to them. I'll never understand why the lady stood on the stump. I think it's the oddest thing. And um, I know with my tolerance for bears and my knowledge of bear behavior, I would never put myself in that position. I read somewhere that the lady reported saying she felt like she was doing the right thing because she was getting up on the stump to be big and that she had read, you want to act big around bears. I find what you read and what she said amazing, and I don't find it truthful. I just be straight up with you. That's why we have a jury system in our country. It's because people know when somebody's full of shit. And so standing there videotaping a bear, waving with their hand, um, uh, which is what was shown on the video, um, I don't believe what she said to uh, other people uh, one single bit. What was Victor actually doing in that moment? What is it called that he was, is there a name for what he was trying to do? Did he have restraint? in cuffing the lady. Absolutely. He's strong enough to tear her leg right off. Um, he smacked her on the leg. Um, and that's the cuffing? Yep. It's, and, and that it's been reported around the world that it was an attack. Same thing, that's a lie. It's not a misstatement. It's not somebody that used the wrong synonym. There was no attack at all. Uh, they hit each other harder than that. They hit their cubs harder than that. Cubs hit harder than that. Um, he, for whatever reason, I can't read Victor's mind. He didn't want her there doing what she was doing. And so he, uh, she couldn't understand that. He gave her a physical cue. And, and that's think, called cuffing. Cuffing is, yeah, to not bite or claw he swatted her on the bottom of her leg, and it did cause punctures to her skin. I've been uh, messing with bears before. Um, it's in the movies. Um, uh, uh, huffing, uh, uh, posturing, um, give me my space. Uh, one day, uh, I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't giving a bear his space, and um, he let me know. He smashed my tripod, smashed my camera equipment, pinned me in the corner, and then walked off when he was um, done teaching me that lesson. I didn't get a scratch on me, but bears don't speak English. Um, if you can't understand, they can bluff charge, uh, jaw clack, huff, uh, posture, um, the shoulders, the ears. A lot of 
what they think are, they're t talking to you clearly. A lot of people maybe are tone deaf to that conversation. So the lady on the stump, if she was deaf, dumb, and blind, if she had the IQ of a pebble, you wouldn't stand there and be that close to that bear. You would move away and none of this would have happened. A lot of people have recommended getting inside of your vehicle. I don't comment on those comments, but thousands and thousands of people said, why don't you get inside of your vehicle? Uh, that's a, a logical thought. Uh, with that bear and uh, uh, the experience that the campers had and the experience um, that the bear has, that wasn't even necessary. You don't need to climb a tree. You don't need to play dead. You don't need to piss your pants. Just move away from the bear. It's as simple as that. You know, for people that don't live in the mountains like we do, that live in the city, Everybody knows, don't feed stray cats. They'll be back the next day. They'll keep coming and you gotta keep feeding them. Bears are massive stomach, huge amount of food intake and water per day, especially this time of year. So baiting a bear in, in many states you can bait them to shoot them and kill them during hunting. In California, you cannot bait bears for the hunt, which it's hunting season right now, but they weren't cited for baiting in a bear in a campsite. We don't even allow it for hunting. Steve, thank you very much for spending time with me today. Uh, this story and getting it right is a deep and personal passion of mine. Getting any story correct is really at the core of who I am. So I appreciate your time and I appreciate you helping us set the record straight. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Remember, when you're out there on the road, keep it between the lines, look out for Smokey, because they are looking out for you. And as always, thank you for allowing me to entertain you, presumably. This is the Vic Meyer Show every Wednesday on YouTube. Please like, share, and subscribe. All those things help to building the dream that is the Vic Meyer Show and doing this full time. Also, thank you to my Patreon members. You can see your name in lights every week by becoming a Patreon member and supporting this cause and the causes that are near and dear to the Vic Meyer Show. Much love, everybody. We'll see you next week. And Samoa, California, on the north coast of California. Happy Halloween, everybody. There are rows and rows of vendors here, like Sarah and Lynette. <laughs> Hello? Come along. I need help. Your help, actually. From him. He's out to you. And there's no one else. Uh, yeah, it's nice to be liked. I get cards and letters and presents. And a free cup of coffee is my normal day. Um, and, and, and I'm not going to say that it doesn't feel nice to be liked, but um, absolutely uh, the attention should be on the animals. Um, they have earned their place here and also on the community that gave me my start. Um, all those people trusted what I was doing and encouraged me. And if I got something wrong, they encouraged me even more. And so I've just been so lucky and so blessed to have that support. So, you know, as we put in the book, the real kudos goes to the community, the people that have my back, and to the animals themselves in this beautiful place that we call home. To find out more about what the bears know and Steve's book, go down to the descriptions and check out the link. People all over the world ask me if I want my job back. Um, I don't dwell on it because it's not a question that I need to answer. The city council and the town manager will never ever employ me again. They've made that crystal clear. And so I'm sorry that people are so interested in it. I'm flattered, but they just don't understand um, where these people's heads are at. 
and what their motivations are. It puzzles me to this day um, that I came up with a non-lethal approach to manage these animals and to teach them what it takes to live uh, peacefully with us. It took off and became a worldwide and um, uh, the television shows, magazines, newspaper, social media. It's really, uh, it's something that I can't get my head around. And I'm the person that all of this is focused on. It's very, very unusual. And um, I've tried to do the very best I can to represent those people and um, do my work in a sincere way that would make them proud. <clears throat> um, people can still watch the uh, television series. The Bear Whisperer was um, paid for by Discovery and aired on Animal Planet, but you can Google it and watch it on your phone. Um, people have this real connection with bears, and I think that is part of what has um, made me, you know, indeed worldwide uh, name with bear management.